Welcome to the Glasses Half Full Talk Show. Let's face it, life can be tough in many ways. Here on the Glasses Half Full, we focus on how life is tough financially. Dealing with these financial realities can be a challenge. Essentially, we have to find ways to do more with less. Less money, that is. The show is focused on helping you discover ways to achieve that goal, even if you don't have a lot of money to work with. We'll be meeting people from many different walks of life. They'll share their stories and expertise. Looking to do more with less and maintain a positive attitude while you're doing it? Welcome to the Glass is Half Full. Now let's join Richard and his guests in the studio. Hi, I'm Richard Killen. Welcome to the Glass is Half Full, uh, the program that tries to get you a better bang for your buck, sort of, even if your bucks aren't all that plentiful. Um, we um, today are going to talk about how to raise, I'm going to read this now so I don't get it wrong, how to raise the vibrational frequencies within you, around you, and between you and others. And to explain why this is important, we have as our guest, Don James. Hello, Don. Welcome, Hi. Welcome to our show. Pleasure to be here, Richard. Um, Don is, uh, I'm going to read this too so I'll get this right. Don is the best-selling author of three books, which have been translated into French, Spanish, and Hindi. She's a mentor a music performer, and a transformational leader. She provides people with the tools and inspiration to shift the reality of their inner and outer wealth. Did I get that right? You did. <laughs> I think it's written down. <laughs> so, Don, before we get into the vibrational frequencies, uh, which I know you, you're here to explain to us, yeah. um, I'd like to find out how you learned about all this. And uh, when I say this, I understand that in 2003, I think it was, uh, you had a near-death experience, which uh, seemed to be the catalyst that uh, kind of brought all the rest of it about. Right? Yes. Can you tell our audience what happened. Absolutely. Um, so, Richard, I, you know, I, I had a very traditional life. Grew up in Toronto, actually, and uh, went to school, got married, got into my career, and I kind of fast-tracked. My whole life was a fast track. Was that? Yeah. Um, so I kind of climbed the ladder quickly in the corporate world, and. Uh, before you knew it, in my 30s, I was already a general manager of a corporation. So, a lot of stress, a lot of um, responsibility, and a young family. I had three young kids, my husband and I. Many times we do what we're good at. It doesn't mean we're doing what we are here to do. And so, at some point in my career, there was a separation between doing what I'm good at and this feeling I was missing something. Um, as we approach the spring of 2003, I actually lost my appetite. That was the first sign I was not doing what I was supposed to do. And for a three-month period, I basically did not eat, did not want food. I was not even hungry. It was really, a, lost really lost my appetite. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of that 90-day period, I actually stopped speaking. Really? And to help people understand my mindset, I knew I wasn't doing the right thing, but I didn't know what the right thing was. But I started to withdraw from everything. Mm -hmm. And on that last day that I wasn't talking, I just felt, I listened to my last heartbeat. It just, everything just stopped. Mm -hmm. My body shut down and everything stopped. So for me, that was my first realization that there's more to us in this physical shell. And I had what, what most people would describe as a spiritual awakening experience, i.e. the physical self ceased to exist and I experienced what it was to be non-physical, i.e. spiritual. That is a profound, unbelievable your soul, experience. Your soul took over? There was no physical, <laughs> yes. Whatever, whatever, whatever the, soul that, is, right? the soul is, the spirit is, mm -hmm. and in that moment, I realized that there was something much bigger I had to do than my corporate day job. Mm -hmm. uh, two days after that experience, I quit my corporate day job. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we're here to talk about money and management, but yes, without a plan, I said, goodbye, mm -hmm. click, no plan. So yeah, I went from six digits to zero in 72 hours. Really? But I've met people who that <laughs> happened to, but not quite the same way you're describing. It was very quick. I tend to move quick, but spirit moved even quicker than I used to move. Mm -hmm. And uh, within two days, I made some major changes in my life within two days. Um, I think 
sometimes when we are not on the right path, we start getting signals. And for me, my body shut down, my appetite disappeared. Mm. Um, I stopped speaking. And after that experience, it seems like I stopped the 40 years of being in here, I started to live in here. That was the second most profound thing that happened. Mm. This woke up. And when I refer to my heart space, I'm talking about why am I here? How do I find joy in my life? I never had joy until I woke up. And I began looking for ways to enjoy life, not get the job, to get the this, to get the that. We, we're, we're sort of caught up in this paradigm dream of making money to have more stuff. And my spiritual awakening taught me it's not about the stuff we acquire. It's about the quality of the experiences that we have while we're here. So there was a whole different shift going on. Well, tuned to something like... Um, totally. Like it's far more rewarding to give than to receive kind of thing. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. And the other part of that message is, what do you have to share with the world? Mm -hmm. What did I already have? And so I had to look at what I came here with and how was I going to use it as opposed to go get the degree, go get the job, go get the this, go get the that, and keep collecting. So my whole perspective of mm -hmm. being here shifted in two days. So that was a short answer. <laughs> That's a long one. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so Don, what is vibrational frequencies? So the scientific definition, and then I'm going to give you what I call my spiritual definition, because there's really there's two messages I share in my first book. Vibrational frequency is a measurement of how energy moves. So bioelectricity is something that we have, all living things have it. It's, it's electrical energy that runs through everything, our cells, our muscles. The measurement of how that energy flows, it's measured in something called vibrational frequency. So for example, if I was to look at a I'm not picking on fast food, but if you're to look at a hamburger, <laughs> it's pretty dead. There's nothing living in there, right? The lettuce still isn't in the ground. The tomato's not on the vine. You're looking at this thing with no life. So this, the vibrational frequency is zero. If I go to a tree that has an apple, there is life, life force energy moving through that tree still connected to the apple. There is a measurement of frequency in living things. Um, so uh, Bruce Tanio in the 1980s created a device that measures vibrational frequency. So we know the vibrational frequency of our heart, our spleen, our liver. Um, we know the vibrational frequency of the brain when we're actually awake <laughs> versus when we're asleep. All of these things now we can measure. So the flow of energy, that measurement is vibrational frequency. On a spiritual definition or metaphysical definition, everything in your body, our bodies, are designed to flow. Everything must be flowing. If it's not flowing, we're going to get sick. So on a metaphysical level, how do we keep energy flowing at an optimal rate? Um, not just, you know, your lungs, uh, the lymphatic, the blood, the oxygen, but even on a conscious level, how do I stay in the flow of life? Because the moment we become stagnant or we become very stressed, and I know we talk about financial stress, but there's all sorts of stress in the world, the moment we become stressed, we actually stop the flow of energy. We get tense. And so mm -hmm. flow, having flow is a good thing. When we're stagnant or we're stressed, we restrict energy, mm -hmm. which means we are attracting disease into the body. And uh, there is a bit of a parallel even with money. Mm -hmm. Even with money. It's a subject I know something of. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or so the absence of it. <laughs> exactly. Well, the absence of money causes stress. Right? So what happens when we, we, we spend more Actually, than we receive? Really? Really. Oh, the sure. absence of money causes stress only when you need the money to do something. Mm. If you really don't need money to do anything, not having it doesn't matter. That's true. Yep. That's true. One which would be... take a little bit more philosophical approach to all these things. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm, di I'm actually digressing here. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Tom. Yeah, so no, when, when we're in the flow of life, things, things we are able to manage ourselves with ease. Um, there's a wonderful, wonderful native saying that when we live in the giving and the receiving of life, i.e. when we live in balance, mm -hmm. stress cannot exist. It's very, it's 
Very yoga-ish. Very yoga-ish, yes. <laughs> but it's, think about it. Yeah, when sure. we give and receive, yeah. we're not out of balance. Mm -hmm. If I spend more money than I'm earning, <laughs> I'm out of balance. Not, not if MasterCard lets you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to pick on MasterCard. I hear you. I hear you. Scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, you might leave it in. <laughs> but um, given all of this, um, mm -hmm. how do people make note of it? How do, how do people grasp this? Sure. So the concept, I would say, is, um, and, the, you know, the reason why I, I found the courage after seven years of living this. Yes, we don't want everybody to go through you know, everything you went through. No, by all day. means. I lived through this for seven years, and then I found the courage to start writing because I wasn't a writer by profession. I had a very different life before 2003. My second life started 2003, and for me, I had to live it. So I'll give you a few examples. Um, Living a high vibration life means that I begin to pay attention to things that are positive and negative. How will it impact my life? I start to make choices based on whether this is going to be rewarding or detrimental. You start to consciously make a choice. Don't just live as if there is no consequence. So you start to weigh things differently. And then for me, if my goal is to stay in the flow, to not have that tension, that stress, and do not create drama in your life, I'm going to make very different decisions. Um, one, of the, one of the things that a lot of people relate to in my first book um, is the vibration of food and recognizing things that are, have frequency, life, and things that are dead, and paying attention to what you're putting in your body because um, a lot of East, uh, Indian um, and Eastern uh, philosophies say you are what you eat. So if you eat food that is dead, you're eating death. If you look for things that are lively and alive and nutritious, then you're putting life into your body. So that's one way to start looking at vibration. Am I bringing things into my home that's beneficial for me? Am I interacting with people that are positive and supportive? Am I doing things that are not going to put me in harm. So you start paying attention to your choices. Mm -hmm. That's how you get into a high vibration life. So that's what I've been teaching for almost 18 years. How to stay in that flow. The, um, yeah. it's, it's interesting because it's very true, among other things. <laughs> yeah. When something is true, it tends to have a, an interest of its own. <laughs> <laughs> but as an insolvency trustee, um, I, I run into people not just a few, many people who, by their own admission, mm -hmm. have developed um, very questionable bad habits, you might say, yeah. in the use of their credit cards, credit cards being the most, uh, what's the word? Uh, Accessible. <laughs> no, everybody's got them, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, so, you know, so they, they basically get into trouble through the mismanagement of them. And, and this is yeah. essentially something that, um, that people tend to do without uh, a great deal of conscious thought. Okay? Um, so I understand that right. you've already approached this problem. You have your own views on it. And I think you call it shopping on autopilot. Shopping right? on autopilot, yes. That's yes. a nice 21st century ring to it, so <laughs> want to explain it? <laughs> yeah, no, this topic is near and dear to me because um, you know, to me, it's the difference between um, living consciously and, and sleepwalking through life, literally sleepwalking. One of the things that I observe, and I think a lot of uh, viewers can relate, many times you go into the grocery store, and I see this all the time, people have the shopping cart, they go down the same aisles, and they pick up the same brands, and they put the same brands in the buggy, and they head to the cash, and they don't even look for anything new. They're mm -hmm. not checking anything new. They're not, they're not curious. They're not inquisitive. That's not me, by the way. That's not you. No. Okay, so you're probably two and a half no, hours there. My wife there. is always saying, yeah, come on, let's go. <laughs> so this is what I refer to as shopping on autopilot, and I'm going to mm -hmm. even say living on autopilot. Mm -hmm. We do the things that we do because we're used to the things that we're used to do, and we don't really deviate much. And it's kind of like living passively, if that's the right word to say. A little automatically. Bit. automatically. Yeah. However, also, it goes with being comfortable too. I mean, if things yes. are reasonably good for you, why, why think right. about it? Right. But if you don't question what you're putting in the shopping cart, like, 
you know, do we even look at the labels? I don't know. Some people do, some, some people some don't. Some of us with high blood pressure do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I've, what I've tend to, the, co the phrase that I coin is shopping on yeah. autopilot because we are living as if we don't have a choice. And one of the things I learned when I died and came back is you always have a choice. Mm -hmm. So how about we start making better choices? A quick example would be, um, you know, we can buy processed food mm -hmm. or we can buy fresh food. We can shop at a farmer's market. Each one of those decisions, you're going to have a higher or lower vibrational frequency going into your body. So if we're not aware of that, we're going to be not healthy. But when I look at the, when I look at the whole premise behind it, if you truly believe you will not be happy until you're driving that car or you're not going to get the guy until you wear that perfume. Like if you truly start believing that, then yes, you're going to go out and buy this and buy that and buy this. So how do we reverse that? So some of those bad habits you talked about with the credit cards is there's a belief that we need something. Some of those beliefs are based on what we've been fed through the media. And that's where I say, how do you break that chain? Well, and I mean, you, you've trained, you've helped people break that in different ways. Yeah, but yeah. I'm one of the few uh, people in my business who goes back far enough to actually know a, a, an, uh, an era that didn't have this, uh, this o overly weighted um, advertising mm. um, driven society. world. Society. Yeah. Society. When I, um, I'll tell you my story a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. When I, uh, when I <laughs> started working, um, mm -hmm. this is long before you were born, Don. The, um, the business I got into was the consumer loan business. And the idea was at the time that uh, we were the only place you could go to borrow 500 bucks. Oh. Sure. It was called a finance company, household finance and all those guys. HFC, yes, yeah, yes, right? I remember those no, days. You, don't. you heard about it. <laughs> anyway, the, um, the, uh, it, was, it was very, very effective. You know, People would phone up and they'd say, I need 500, I need 1,000 dollars for this or that. Okay, mm -hmm. They'd come in and get a loan. They'd sign a contract and come in and get a loan. But in the process of doing that, what they had to do is they, they, they knew they were going to have to show up and convince me to approve the loan. Okay. Okay. So in other words, they, they had to sell it, to sell the idea that I should lend them the money. Okay. Before they could do that, yeah. they had to sell it to themselves. Right. They had to justify it in their own mind, right? Okay, so they could prove it to me, kind of thing. I and see. I wasn't onerous. Yeah. You know, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. In fact, I was willing. You know, I, I was there to do that, right? I, I wasn't going to say no. I was going to kind of default to yes, unless uh, right. otherwise, right? Right. But then along came credit cards, mm. and credit cards totally removed that little process where they had to justify it to themselves. I see. Okay. I and then see. from then on, from, from that moment on, you have today's world. Right. Um, right. Exacerbated now by uh, what are they, online lenders and uh, you know, things like yeah. that. It's totally changed. Anyway, it, 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 feeds, is, it feeds yeah. right into what you're uh, what Yeah. You're yeah. I didn't realize that was there was a precursor to that because it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. In, it's in my book. Okay, great, because I need a copy. I'll give you one. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a Rita Holic. That's amazing. I can tell. <laughs> Now, if there's one major uh, thought or uh, message uh, mm -hmm. that um, you would give somebody from your visit today, uh, what would it be? If I had to give one message, I would say, in order to change our behaviors, we have to start looking at what we truly value in life and what we truly believe about ourselves. Um, I'm a firm believer that if you begin to change your inner dialogue and recognize you are rich, you have what you need, you came here fully loaded, if you start to believe that you're not incomplete, you're going to have less attraction to shop till you drop. Mm -hmm. That is going to not be important to you because I went through it. And so when you start owning your own value, your own worth, you start feeling good about what you already have all this stuff becomes less important to you. Mm -hmm. So my, my message, which is the first sentence I heard when I opened my eyes and I came mm -hmm. back to life was, all you need is within you. Mm -hmm. All you truly need is within you. Let's start owning that message, looking at what we already have so that we're not so attached to external stuff that guess what, you can't take it with you. Mm -hmm. What you take with you is in here. Mm 